Hi, I'm here with Paul Tomasello. Oh, wait, it just started now. I'm here with Paul Tomasello. He's a friend of mine from Chicago. He lives in L.A. He's an actor, a salesman, and um, a very interesting guy because he's gone on this spiritual path where he tried all different philosophies and religions. And so we're just going to get to know Paul today. He taught in Korea. He traveled throughout Asia. Where else have you been, Paul? Uh... L.A., San Diego. Have you been to Europe? Chicago. No. I want to go to Italy. I want to go to... Yeah, so I do I. To go to Spain. So your, your parents are both Italian, right? Italian-American. They're American-Italian. American they were born Italian. in America. I like that. So I'm I'm American Irish and American Italian, and I've never been to Italia. Isn't that ridiculous? Maybe. And Not I live really. in Japan. No. So I live in Japan, everybody. And uh, this is Tokyo. We just got through a typhoon, and when we were starting yeah, one, up, this... one person died. Yeah. So Paul, take over. You had something interesting to say about that. No, I was saying like one person died in your typhoon, and like. About five or six people are getting shot in Chicago right now. That's terrible. That's just terrible. It's true. Uh, right. Right. So how do you feel about that? How do you feel about America? You've lived in South Korea. You Did you live in China? You lived in China for a while, right? Like three weeks. Where else? I don't know if you would necessarily say I lived in Asia. I traveled Asia for about... How long that was. Should I tell the story about how we met? How did we meet? Uh, did we meet we at met Tony's in, bar? No, we met in Itaewon. We met in Itaewon. Yeah. Dunkin' Donuts or something, right? You were with <laughs> Al Lumi? Al Looney? Yeah, I still talk to Al. Yeah, so do I sometimes. <laughs> so, uh, he wants to go back to Korea. Al is not in Korea now? No, he's in Ohio. He's so trying to get back. Tell, let me just tell people how I came to know you. As far as I know, you were looking for a teacher because you wanted to leave a school, right? In Pangidong. And yeah, I said, I why are you this, leaving? I wanted to leave the school that I was at, yeah. Okay, tell, you want to tell the story? Go ahead. Well, the main reason I was leaving is because I was teaching kids right off the incubator. And it was... <laughs> absolutely frustrating on a daily basis it was at the well at that time i wasn't in the right frame of mind i was not in good health i was drinking i think the the job was causing me to drink actually korea itself soul itself was causing me to drink i didn't have good willpower and so i would teach and then like all of my friends were, were drinkers. I remember all the teachers were drinkers and all the Koreans were drinkers. So you go out at night and you drink to relieve your stress. And then you're going into the classroom and you have to bait. You're basically babysitting like eight kids off the incubator who don't speak a, speak a lick of English. And you're too much of a lazy, lazy as drunk to even try to learn any type of Korean language. So it's just a, a big clusterfuck, to be honest with you. You mean English, right? No, trying to teach. Well, yeah, that too. But yeah, just trying to teach like little babies. Like, first of all, they're telling you that the kids are like, when, when before they get you out there, they're like signing you on a contract and telling you that the kids are six years old, but little, little do they, you know, I think they count the age when the kids are actually in the womb. So the age they of do. these kids were actually four. You know, they're still uh -huh. <clears throat> shitting your pants. There was, there was one time where this kid just kept on coming up to me. And I think he was saying the word, what's the word for what? Is it boyo? Boyo? Um, it's... It's it's mushimnika, but that that would be what is that? So, so they'll just say, but a child would say muya or mueo, and it comes out okay, like muyo. Okay, muyo. Okay, yeah. so this kid kept on coming up to me, kept on going muyo, muyo, for like ah, throughout what? 
Just what is more? Oh, and more? so I would. He more? would say more. Well, he would say moil, and I would go what? And he go moil, and I would go what? <laughs> That's like who's on first. And so we're going, so we're going back and forth, and then finally the the helper teacher comes in, and she could speak a little bit of English, and I was like, "What does moil mean?" And she goes, "What?" And I go, "Moil." And she goes, "What?" <laughs> and I'm like. And that's where I was just like, and finally, like two weeks later, I figured out what that all was about. And I'm like, oh, my God. So we were basically just saying what to each other for about the entire day, all of us. That was a pretty organized looking school. They had a nice staff room. They had nice classrooms. But let me just interject. What I remember is that you told me that you told the manager, I forgot her name, that you wanted to leave. And she said, you can't leave. And what did you say? Oh, yeah. She said I couldn't leave. And I said, I said, what? You're, I go, this isn't, I go, I can do whatever I want. Are you kidding? But what me? I, I go, remember, I think, what I remember was, I don't, you, I don't, you, I don't, I don't remember you what your I your grievances did. with her and said, I don't, I don't think I can teach here anymore. I think I'm leaving or I'm leaving. And she said, you can't leave. And you said, oh, I'm definitely leaving now. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. That's what it was. <laughs> I think For there was people, like people don't know Paul. Paul is the person who believes that the most important word in the English language is what, Paul? Or you used to say the most important uh, word. Is... It's no. It's no. And tell it. Tell, please explain why. Well, it's it's saying no to um, that which is like uh, authority, mm. um, but it is also K N O W having. The, the knowledge to know to know is important and saying no is probably even more important well it's just saying no to a lot of things but i used to think it was saying no to authority for many 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 years but then i realized oh wow this is all about saying no to yourself to you know uh what you would call the demons within you and how does that uh, translate to other people like authority or does it? Well, it's basically having authority over yourself. So for many, many years, it was I was that rebellious type who was very rebellious against what you would call like, I don't know, government, I guess, or just any type of corporate authority, like couldn't hold a job, this and that any type of authority where people will want to tell me what to do, which can be good if it's the wrong type of authority. But little did I know that in order to rebel, you have to rebel against yourself first. Hmm. And that's why people right now are struggling, especially, especially like what you see right now going on in America is you get, you get a lot of people pointing their fingers and starting movements and, this and that, but no one's taking a look at themselves. And the mm. best way to rebel against authority is to rebel against yourself. That's how you get that freedom, that personal freedom, freedom in the mind. I didn't know all this. This, this, had, this came through a lot of trial and error, through a lot of... See, the, the, one, the only good thing that I ever did is I never stuck to anything. So I would learn something and realize what I learned worked, but it was wrong. But it worked for me at that time. But it ended up being wrong or ended up being no good. But it got me to that other level. And it just kept on going. Once you stick to something, that's why religion's no good. Because people stick to it. And they don't want to they wanna leave it to go to something better. Like no one wants to leave this to go to something and say, oh. Well, what about this or what about that? They just stick to I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican, I'm this, I'm that. They label it themselves. And then they're stuck once you label yourself or you you put yourself in some sort of identity <clears throat> and you're kind of stuck in that. But when you escape that and don't have any type of identity, then you can keep on. What are you drinking? Lemon water. Oh, nice. Can you hear that sound? I hope you can't hear that sound. Why is this falling up? That looks good. That looks uh, 
So that's a really interesting point. You mentioned that the last time we talked, and that's what made me think I wanted to interview you because when we, we have first no one met, else to interview. That too. <laughs> Nobody wants to talk to me. So uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm the only fool that I get up at seven in the morning to the interview. <laughs> Paul is in L.A. and he's good enough to talk to me. It's now 11.35 at night in, in Japan, in Tokyo. I just want to say a few words here. When I first met you, I thought you were very funny, but also a bit conspiratorial, a bit unhinged, a bit undisciplined, but knowledgeable about a lot of different things. I think we both latched on to like different things. I like philosophy, aerospace, language. You seem to know something about... Uh, esoteric knowledge about conspiracy theories uh about religion and then yeah, the last if, I, if you don't mind talked, me if you don't mind interjecting yeah. you you are the left brain and i am the right brain but go ahead yeah you've always you've always been telling me that um uh, it might be interesting for whoever might be listening though to know that i took a spiritual path too but i stuck with things as you might say so i was a born again christian for a few years in my teens then i became agnostic I started meditating on my own, and then I read Dan Millman, the Tao Te Ching, Thich Nhat Hanh, and Suzuki, Shin, Shin Liu Suzuki Roshi. Then I came to Korea. I went to Korea, and I became a formal Buddhist, but I didn't like everything in the school of Buddhism that I joined. Um, but I noticed that you started to go through a progression, and you started to... Well, first of all, I went back to America, and we were both talking on the phone. You had gone back to America. You were in Chicago. I was in New York. We were talking about coming back to Asia. And we would have good conversations, but it invariably ended up in an argument because we were both upset with America, poverty, gun violence, the politics of the day. And we weren't exactly in the right situations. And it would, the could conversation I, I would coalesce. Them? Yeah. And, but last thing, and then you started to, you started to progress. You started to become less argumentative and the thing that really capped your growth to me was that you just said you don't stick to something. And now a lot of people might think that means that you quit, but you don't mean that. Can you elaborate just a little more on what you mean by not sticking? Yeah, but when you say that, like, we both care about what, what did you say about poverty and this? And I that? think we both I think we both had this view about things that are wrong with the world and. And uh, I know that you also felt that just talking about it or throwing money at it is not caring about it. I'm aware people should know that you're a very hands on kind of person and you're very uh, much about curing yourself, as you said, conquering yourself. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, I never really cared about that. That was just my ego. Um, that's when I realized that all the complaining that I was doing about they Right. When I, when I started realizing that they is me, right. then things started to change. Like this, like they, I mean, who's they? Right. Like I literally, like I literally had friends that were like, wow, you're so conspiracy. Who are they? And I would go, the Rothschilds, the Bushes, old right. man Bush. Like I would say things without even knowing me. First of all, like, I never even met my own mayor in my town. Like it's like, these are things where it's like, I took all of this information from people, fallible people that make the same mm. mistakes as me on YouTube. You know, none of this information is coming from, you know, people like, I don't know, Jesus or Buddha or like, you know, this is, who's the other guy, Zoroaster, like, you know, or even Carl Jung or anything, you know, it's just like these new age conspiratorial people, um, anything that was kind of like on YouTube or anything that I could research. And I was just repeating it. And while this is going on, I was talking to other people about it with like a bear in my hand and a cigarette and just got done eating a whole bunch of meat and like just, you know, the mind isn't right. Like a lot of anger inside from childhood. And like, I mean, it's just a plethora of stuff to where I, I just kept on pointing fingers when in actuality, the problem was uh, right in front of my mirror. So is it fair to say that you did learn things from these YouTube videos you watched about, say, the Federal Reserve Bank or the founders or the Illuminati or 
maybe even aliens or any kind yeah. of conspiracy. Sure. But you, you, you realize you were on a soapbox and a lot of these people who get into these things, they really should do work on themselves first. Is that sure. that's fair to say? Yeah. So basically what happens is uh, the rabbit hole keeps going and going until it leads you back to yourself. Mm. Like that's basically the whole point of actually going down that rabbit hole because that rabbit hole kind of does show that you do care. Because I remember it started after 9-11. Because I was, I was really, I never bought into the whole story of what they were telling me. I was like, how does a third building fall? Like, there's actually a third building that fell mm. without anything hitting it. And building I'm like, seven. Why, why aren't, yeah, why aren't people looking into this? Like, right. So I never bought into that story. And then I'm like sitting there at a corporate job and I'm like researching it because I'm bored with the job and I actually have access to internet. This is like in the you know, early 2000, 2002 or something. And I'm like, oh my God. And then I start researching and I, I go click on some other thing and I'm like, what the fuck is a reptilian? And I'm like, you aliens. I'm like, like Area 51, what? Well, the the military is saying that UFOs are real and this and that, and then like it goes Federal Reserve, like what's going on with this? And then like, what's this movie Zeitgeist that this this? I remember this girl showing me this girl that I hooked up with in downtown Chicago. She's laying in my bed, and we start talking about things in the world, and she's like, "Have you seen the movie Zeitgeist?" And I'm like, "What the hell is Zeitgeist?" And she's like, you oh, got to wow. watch this. And we're laying in bed watching the movie Zeitgeist. And I'm like, holy shit, why don't people know about this? And I'm like getting right. on Facebook and posting it on Facebook. And yeah, I was it's just this whole new world that you just enter. That eventually, yeah, like eventually leads you back to yourself, which is basically in order to conquer, if you want to conquer all of this you got to conquer yourself first it's that simple um can i pit stop for a minute like if imagine we're on a in a car on a road trip i just want to pull off to the side of the road for a minute not necessarily for comic relief but just something interesting something that sort of goes hand in hand with zeitgeist was a strange movie an animation do you remember it something about a goat do you remember that it was haunting oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i showed it to you oh right yeah what was that? Mm -hmm. That just blew my mind. I forgot. Yeah, what that there's was. a there's a lot. There's a lot, man. There was that that whole classroom scene was very creepy. It's like, yes, yes. Those kids, oh those God. kid, those kids were repeating the words like kite, fly, plane, like metal right. building, or so, I don't know what it was. All this stuff is very. And then there was Obama dancing around, and he becomes Bin Laden or something. Oh, yeah. Man. So what would you say to people who are just starting to discover things like this? They're breaking out of the mold of social studies and, you know, uh, they might be getting into the into YouTube and they might see that there's something else like Building 7 or, you know, the Kennedy assassination. I went down that route when I was young. What would you, would yeah, you say I'm that a, they should I'm ignore a... these things altogether? Take them no. with a grain of salt. What would how did it work Don't for you? Maybe you could take, give us a slice take... of how you progressed take it in but don't stick to it i'm a, I'm a big believer in individualism i don't like collectivism as, at all it's, it's probably the reason the world is going to it's going the way that it's going so i'm a big believer i used to uh substitute teach and i always see like the the one kid in the classroom that's not following the other groups you know belonging to a group and he's doing his own thing i'm like this kid's gonna make it out of here and i think society purposely makes loners look like the crazy people and they do that on purpose because they know that the ones that are loners are the teslas and the einsteins and the ones that are really going to improve the world um i really but you don't believe that, that this teachers do that on purpose or teachers no i'm saying so, society I'm so saying it's the other students makes... parents media i'm saying the movie yeah like like the movies and the media make make it seem like loners oh he was a loner that's why he did this oh he was a loner that's why he did oh that. i see or even I see. yeah no no teachers don't do that teachers are very uh supportive of the kids that are loners 
Mm. But I think society does that. I think society will be like, well, yeah, look at look at him. He was the the, little, the reason he shot all those. You know, it had nothing to do with the psychotropic drugs that he was on. It was because he was a loner. Like what? No, it has everything to do with his parenting and like society and this and that. Like, do you happen to remember what the story was with, say, a collection of the famous shooters? I have a feeling you might know. Columbine. Yeah, I mean, it all it all it, it, it all coincided with psychotropic drugs with the. Uh, those psychotic drugs. So, are you talking about far- over the counter things? Or? Yeah, when farm, far- well, not over counter, no. We're talking like prescribed Prozac. That's like what whatever. I mean. It, over the counter. So, it wasn't oh, psychotropic. Over the counter. Yeah, oh, you know, over the counter is medicine. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Um, yeah, whatever is pre- all the so basically these shootings started in 1999 with Columbine, I believe. <clears throat> and what happens is these things are put on TV and now that we have the internet, um, they actually cause more shootings by being, how do you say? Like a social aired. phenomenon. Yeah, I mean... Which appeals to people who are angry yeah, I mean, or look at, dis- look at, disaffected. Look at you're almost the same age as me. I remember like being a little kid and, and the big, the big phenomenon was the, it was like John Wayne Gacy, Charles Manson, the son of Sam, like all this stuff. And then all of a sudden it just disappeared. And then it became like, as we got a little bit older, it was like OJ and Drew Peterson and Scott Peterson. And then like that disappeared. And then all of a sudden we have like, terrorism 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 and then like that disappears and then we have isis and then al-qaeda and now we have like school shootings and now it's um vapes <laughs> it's, do it's you like, think it's always, do you think it's, it's just a phenomenon like of what they decide to focus on that really these other things are still going on more or less but the news latches on to something that sells sure or what they want you to think about yeah mm. Do you think it's that organized? Do you think it's that organized? From the top? Yeah. Mm. Why wouldn't it be? I don't know. I don't I don't think people are as crazy as we make them out to be when we're upset about some issue. I think that we sort of gravitate towards modes of behavior. Maybe in these groups you talked about. Democrats start talking this way. PC people start talking that way. News pundits start talking that way. I'd like to get back to you, though. Um, what made you go to Asia to teach? Or, or was uh, so that I, I had. I was. I'll tell you. The, I'll tell you the story. I had this corporate job, sitting in a cubicle behind a desk over a phone, doing sales meetings. You know, TPS reports. You know. Yeah, I'm gonna need you to come in on Saturday and that whole type deal, you know. Yeah, it's a yeah. horrible, horrible job. And I worked with this kid who actually people became riding my their ass kind of situation. Yeah, I worked with this kid. His name was uh, Michael Connor. This Irish kid, Irish kid that I end up uh, end up being my roommate. We end up became we became friends and. Um, we had a team meeting. We were on the. We had the same job, the same corporate job. I met him there, and, and we had a team meeting one day. And uh, he was like me. He was this, you know, Irish kid that was rebellious. I was the Italian kid that was rebellious. And they're always like, "Here come Paul and Mike," you know. And uh, we had this team meeting one day on a Monday, and uh, during the team, and Mike hated our our manager. He couldn't stand him. I forgot it. I think his name was Ron. And in the middle of the meeting, Mike gets up while Ron's talking and he goes to leave the meeting. And Ron goes to Mike. He goes, hey, Mikey, where are you going? And Mike's like, I'm leaving. He's like, I'm talking here. Can you wait to use the bathroom? And Mike's like, I'm not going to use the bathroom. I'm leaving. He's like, what do you mean you're leaving? He's like, I quit. And I was like, wow, this guy's my friend, man. This guy's great. So Mike quits. And then about like later that day, he calls me up and he's like, Paul, I think I made a mistake. What the fuck am I going to do? 
I'm like, I don't know, man. He was like, yeah. I'm like, you have to get another job, this and that. And I'm like, you got a bachelor's degree. Why don't you go teach English? I heard you make good money over there. You know, you get to travel, experience the world, meet some nice, hot Asian girls. And then like, oh, by the way, so this is after we were roommates. So yeah, he called me. And then like, like, you know, I think it was like a week later, like, I don't know. It was later on. It might, might've been two, three weeks, you know, later on. And I tried calling his, you know, we were talking and talking. And then one time I tried calling his phone it was, and it was disconnected. And I'm like, oh man, he's probably not able to pay his bills, this and that. And then one day I get this email and he, and it's a picture of him with a whole bunch of Asian people. And it's like, find out that he's in Korea. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, it was a great, so did I like, know this fella? No, you know. never met him. Be, I, you never met him. So, oh. um, so I'm going back and forth with him. I still have this horrible corporate job. And I'm going back and forth with him. He's having the time of his life. And then finally, I'm like, fuck it. I'm coming out there. <laughs> so I so that's how you ended up. Yeah, I quit my job. I actually told my boss. I told the same guy. I said, I tried to, I tried to start, uh, so our boss, the, the head honchos at the job, they tried to change our, our um, pay, how we were getting paid. They tried to switch us from having a base salary mm -hmm. to, a draw, to a draw against commission. And they were trying to, they were trying to make it look like that you're going to make more money. But the problem with the job that we had, it was a logistics job. And the problem with the job that we had is you can lose your client very fast to another client because we, you were kind of like a broker. And if you lose a big client, then you lose that base salary. So you're drawing as commission. You're really not getting paid anything. So there was like 100 people. This is a big corporation. You know, there's like over 100 salespeople. And I was going around the sales offices and telling people, and it was me and this other kid, and we were going around telling people, do not sign this. Don't sign this. They were, you're getting duped into, sign, into doing this. Like You need your base salary. And my boss, the, one of the head, the head boss, actually pulled me into an office one morning and said, Paul, why are you doing this? You're such a good salesperson. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, I know what this is all about. And actually, I did end up losing a big client. And um, I, I said, no, I'm not signing this. And I'm telling people not to sign this. And then he said something to me that really pissed me off. And I said, look, you're going to stick. Oh, he said, why are you being so rebellious? And I go, you're going to stick a dick in my ass. And if I wiggle, you're going to call me rebellious. <laughs> and he didn't, he didn't know what to say to that. And I just said, I quit. And I, and I just left. And then I went to Korea. Wow. I was, I remember, I was so rebellious. I could not I remember keep any job. I couldn't even, if someone tried to tell me what to do, like I would just like, you know, quit, I'm, like right then I'm, and there. I'm pretty outgoing when I'm with friends and when I'm alone, I'm sort of reserved. Uh, if I'm in a cafe in New York or Colorado, I'll talk to people. Less so here in Japan, a little more so in Korea. But when I'm with friends, I'm unhinged. And you just totally released me. I remember we'd be walking across the street and you'd see a girl and you'd say, wow, you're so beautiful. Are you married? And at that time, I was very tuned into the Korean world. I'd been there 12 or 13 years when you finally arrived. And so I had gotten sort of dumbed down and I started to behave like local people. You know, when you're new in a place, you just, you're yourself. But you were saying everything to everybody. You would, you would go up to a girl and go, excuse me, you know where, and you'd put on this heavier Italian accent, Italian-American, do you know where I can find the coffee shop around here? And there was one right behind you. <laughs> there was one on every corner. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, Korea is yeah. bar, coffee shop, restaurant, bar, coffee shop, restaurant, brothel, brothel, bar, coffee shop, restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Um, talk about how you maintain your, your good state of mind. A lot of people would be shocked if they heard that you're a college graduate and then you got a corporate job and you were doing well and then you just quit. Then you went to Asia and you taught English. You know, I've often made light of this lifestyle, but when I feel down about it, other people say, do you realize how many people are stuck in a cubicle and they'd love to have your life? How did you gain the confidence to move from thing to thing? 
And talk a little bit about how you maintain your spiritual and physical health. I've always been interested in that. Well, at the age of four, I never accepted life for what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I what? said, my mom was driving me to, we were I in the car. I thought you were making a joke. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm being dead <laughs> I thought serious. you were sitting there thinking, he's getting too serious. Let no. me pull the rug out from under him. It, what? It, age star- of four, it started it. I it started at the down. <laughs> it started at the age of four. I'm not joking. Really? We were in that. We were in that. We were in our little care, uh, whatever you call those those cars. Uh, I don't know, I forgot what type of car it was. It was one of those Chevys. And my mom was driving me, and I said, "Ma, where are we going?" And she's like, "We're going to school." And I had no idea what school was. And I'm like thinking, "What's that?" And she's like, "And we went to this building." where I had to sit inside all day and I believe that it was like 85 degrees outside and then it was like you get 10 minutes to go outside but otherwise you're going to sit inside with a whole bunch of other like little people that look like you and then I was like oh wow this is awful and then I was like thank god I don't have to do that again and I (laughs) went home and and your mom was like oh we're doing this again and again and again and I'm like what the fuck and i'm like for a whole year and then like and then you got to do it another year and another year where you have to go in these prisons and you have to wear the same uniform and you You have to obey authority well yeah i went to a catholic school and you have to obey authority and you have to learn about things that are not going to be useful and then you have like 20 minutes for Art and you, you know you, you have like you know forty minutes for art and you have like forty minutes for gym and you have like twenty minutes for recess and otherwise you are sitting down and raising your hand and and like it's just like in this awful prison life and then you're just graduating from that prison life to another prison life to another prison life until you get to the corporate prison life and what was your question? Have you ever heard of John Taylor? Oh, how, I, how I, yeah, sure. The book he yeah. wrote was called Dumbing Us Down, I think, about school, how they make you, they give you ADD, basically, by what you just yeah. described. For sure. Yeah, my I question literally, was, I literally how did you become college free? Counselor. Basically. Uh-huh. How did I become free is reading, you just didn't accept anything for what it, for the way things were. Like uh, mm-hmm. my father used to say, well, this is just how it is. We have to, you know, I'm like, well, I don't accept it. Like we, we, that doesn't mean just because of how it is, is we should accept it, that we shouldn't question it, that we should do whatever we can in order to rebel against it. And, and some people like to rebel in certain ways, you know, as far as, you know, the Gandhi way and, you know, people like to pick it and join movements and this and that. And my way of rebelling was, uh, was, was just saying, no, was just saying, no, not doing it. No, not going to do it. What do you, that's why. And so a lot of people would say like, Oh, you know, Paul, you quit so many, I had more jobs than George Costanza and I'm not joking. So did I. (laughs) But the bottom line is, is like, I just had a huge problem with people telling me what to do. Right. And I never, I believed in the word sovereign, which means in Latin, you know, I started, I took Latin in high school, never paid attention to any of it. And then started learning Latin like a couple of years ago. And the word sovereign means super, Uh, super means above and rex regnum means kingship. So above kingship the word the word anarchy actually means on it means no and archon rulers so I, I just never believed in like coming to this planet where people other than your parents and even they don't have the right to tell you what to do unless they can give you a reason why they're doing it like my parents used to say do this do that do this and i would say why and they say because we said so which is the worst thing you could do as a parent or teacher. You have to explain why. And then the child could be like, okay, that's why I need to do this. And parents you think need that to works learn this. With yeah. all kids? Huh? Well, the other works? way doesn't work. 
my the sister other doesn't work. My sister is a, a psychotherapist, and um, she reasons with her children. But her father, her husband, is a disciplinarian to a degree. So the kids, they know they've got to follow the rules when John tells them, my brother-in-law, what to do. But when Nancy tells them to go to bed, my niece, Addie, she has so many schemes. And my theory is that it's because she knows her mother's reasonable, so she can reason with her. I actually want to side with you, but when I see what happens in that house, I think some kids need to be told. But I don't know how you make them do what you want them to do. I want to think that reason is the way. Uh, the other day you were telling me about, I was just really impressed with your spiritual progression. So you were a Christian and then an what you were a, a, a uh, an atheist, then think an agnostic, then an atheist, then a Buddhist. No, I grew and up now, Catholic. Okay, so can so you give me the progression? So when you grow up Catholic, yeah, when you grow up Catholic, uh, you're uh, if once you get out of that, you either stay Catholic or once you get out of it, you automatically go atheist. That's just the rule <laughs> of life. <laughs> it's not. There's no. There is probably not one Catholic person that has left Catholicism that hasn't gone straight to maybe went to Christianity, but had, but other than that, hasn't gone straight to atheism. And then I went from atheism to pure degeneration. I would say my life went, was going in ruins while I was in atheism. And that was the time that I was pointing fingers at everyone besides myself, drinking a lot, doing drugs, Smoking a lot of weed, gambling, fornicating, sleeping around, couldn't hold a job, uh, couldn't, like, just an absolute mess. Uh, like 185 pounds, eating McDonald's, Italian beef, pizza, smoking cigarettes. <laughs> like, like, what? where, where else me, can I go? It remind, you're, For a second there, you reminded me of the scene uh, where... Where John, Bel not John Belushi, where um, Bill Murray says, dogs and cats living together. <laughs> so when you said McDonald's, I almost lost it here. You what, know, was, what was that from? Uh, I don't remember, but he was talking about, like, you know, the end of the world, Armageddon, <laughs> everything's going wrong. And he would say, <laughs> dogs and cats living together, dogs and cats living together. <laughs> so... Okay, so I'm not I'm not making fun of what you're saying. So um, so now no, you, you have can a, do that. That's fine. You have sort of a strict. You have sort of a, a regimen. You have you have rules. Now. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. So how would you There's, describe your spiritual? How do you? How are you spiritual? Would you call it that? There's my two favorite quotes of all time. One is by uh, Krish Krishnamurti. Is that how you say his name? Yeah. Yeah. Is, um, Jidan Krishnamurti. Mm. It, it is of no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick, sick society. Society, right, right. Yeah. And my That's other cool. one, I'm going to have to look it up because I think I forgot it, is. Uh, how did I. So, oh, this is by a guy named Noon S. Amin Ra, subjecting yourself to. A self subject subjecting yourself to a self dis, self imposed discipline is the surest way to increase the quality of your existence. Period. Wow. Yeah. What I would call a spiritual path. Yeah, it's, it's all about, word. dude. It's all about the when things change. When things changed, like big time like 180 was when i got a right. hebrew and hebrew interpretation of the bible really not the catholic interpretation oh yeah because we we we, <laughs> we were taught we were, people dude this i this is what i used to say to people when i was uh, just a bludgering drunk idiot yeah the bible's all about treating others as you want to be treated 
like every page, like I used to just think that every page was just about that. And it was only about that. Just being nice to people. The golden rule. <laughs> yeah, no, Not long ago, you first, told me that it's about it's, the higher self. It's, it's so much about willpower and self-control. It really is. It's, it's, it's all about that. It's, it's about control of the mind. It mm. goes so deep. It goes so deep. And you meditate, right? You oh, met, yeah. you, you're a meditator. How do you meditate? Yeah. What do you do? Vipassana or do you have a, a mantra or do you have a focal point? How do you meditate? Yeah, I, do mant I do mantras. I meditate. I clear the mind. I sit in lotus position. I lay down. Mm. Um, I do I, whatever I feel for that day. Okay. Whatever. <clears throat> and what happens? How is it different from a day when you don't meditate? It's like night and day. It's like you clear your mind because we're, mm. we're inundated with thought right now because of uh, what's being thrown at us through television, internet, cell phones, smartphones especially. Mm. So thoughts, thoughts are, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, thoughts were what they were, you know, periodic mm. throughout the day. Now they're just boom, 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 boom. And there's... And, and meditation helps you uh, be aware of your thoughts. The thoughts are still there, but then you kind of give, you kind of meditate on the fact that there's a higher self watching those thoughts and just reminding you those aren't your thoughts, you know, because they're not. They're interesting. Not. Yeah. I always find it interesting when I tell people meditation helps and they'll say, oh, I can't do it because I start thinking of things. So I tell them, well, that's the work. You let those thoughts go like clouds. Yeah, it's practice, you never dude. grabbed a cloud before, right? So you, you think about the bills or the problem you're having with your partner. You just let it go. You don't connect another idea to it. You go back to your breath and try to clear your mind. And that's Yeah, you're not, you're not going to pick up a basketball, you know, a person that's never picked up a basketball and all of a sudden start knocking down three-pointers. You got to shoot the layup first. You know, right, and then go to the free right. throw. Well, like it's I practice. Can. It's no, it's yeah. It's no. It's no different than. <laughs> it's no different than like going to the gym. It's the same right. thing. It's the exact right. same thing. Like you can't, you can't. Of course, no one can do it. They've never, you know, you're jumping in a pool. Like you, you never, you were never taught how to swim. <laughs> it's that simple. On a given day, how do you? You know, and use a different metaphor if you like. But I'm just going to use this to get you going. On a given day, how do you bring your thoughts back to where you want them to be? Like you're saying that meditation, these ideas that you hold dear, you know, they allow you to say no. They allow you to be aware of things. They allow you to, uh, to, to not be caught up, boom, 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 with all the things being thrown at us. But I'm sure that you lose your way sometimes. How do you pull yourself back? Because you remember, you remember that the effect is much greater than the cause. So when you touch that boiling pot of water, or you know that that pot on the stove, and then you realize that burns you, you got to keep that in mind for when you want to go out, you know, to have a drink or smoke a cigarette or do the things that are against uh, what people would call God, I guess, nature or your higher self. So you remember cause and effect and karma, and then you just don't do it again. Like, you know, some of the things you you, you do it anyways because you kind of you kind of know that, and you're just like, okay, I can deal with it. But right. you know, quitting quitting drinking and quitting smoking and quitting smoking weed and quitting sleeping around and even quitting like a lot of animal carnal desires that even go much mm -hmm. deeper. It's uh, a little harder you, to give up some people yeah very yeah it's it's <laughs> when you think life is not that's why we're here we're here for that type of hard work we're not here to do the hard work of going to work every day and earning a paycheck that's not why we're here that stuff is just to distract us and it's doing a very good job of course we need to do that stuff but once you do make that money and that money gives you that freedom <laughs> to do other stuff. It's not to go to the bar and hang out with your friends. It's really to work on yourself. 
spend the first 40 years doing that, that's fine. But then when you're done with that, go work on yourself so that when you pass away that you don't have to come back as a mosquito or a frog or even a pig. <laughs> I wouldn't want to come back as a pig in Japan. The pig doesn't have a he doesn't have the, the chance of an know, air molecule here. You know a pig is a do you know there are do, do you know there are regular ma- there are degenerating mammals? Did you know that? No. Did, did you Meaning, know a, a pig is a degenerating mammal? So is a dog. What, is, what does that mean? So what is does a, that mean? So is a, that means so there are mammals on this earth that only use their sexual energy to reproduce and then there are mammals on this earth that use their sexual energy to uh for um, pleasure and yeah we are a, we are literally a degenerating mammal the human actually species. I, I haven't had a girlfriend in almost a decade so I don't why do you, why do you think a, yeah why do you think a, well i'm talking about masturbating too why do you think a woman uh calls a man a dog or a pig those are degenerating mammals that, why do you think the Hasidic Jews and, and the uh, the Kabbalists uh, don't eat uh, pig? They don't eat pork because it's a degenerating mammal. When you eat pork, you actually take in the lust of that um, pig. And many Kabbalists believe that, um, you know, we were once minerals, plants, and animals. And if you do too much lustful things throughout your many lives, you will degenerate back into a being a pig. <laughs> do you believe in, do you so, feel that re- reincarnation <laughs> is real? Yeah, I do or, believe that we were once minerals and plants and animals and you go up to being human and you go from being human to your, no, you go from being an intellectual animal to a human and then to a, high, a higher self beyond the third dimension reality we live in. Yes, I, didn't, I do. I didn't know you felt that way. How often did yeah. they let you out? <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I, if I wouldn't have laughed, I was I was planning this question for the last ten minutes. I wanted to say, so how long have you been at the monastery? And then I thought, wait a minute, let's make it sound like he's in jail. <laughs> oh, I am in jail. Trust me. No, seriously, seriously, folks, this is a very balanced guy here. He may not have all the same beliefs you do, but he'd be. You'd be hard pressed not to feel better if you took some of his advice about meditation, eating right. What do you eat? What do you uh, eat? Right, right now, I'm on Whole Foods. I try to stick with Whole Foods. So you I mean went to the from, supermarket. No, <laughs> no. I, My I actually sister calls to, it Whole Paycheck. People I in Colorado go, call it Whole Paycheck. I actually go <laughs> to a um, Trader uh, Joe's farmer, farmer's market. And I nice. get, yeah, I get the fresh tomatoes, man. Have you, when's the last time you had a real tomato? Oh, wait, you're in Japan. You probably get real tomatoes. They do have fresh stuff, but I have to wonder whether it's from Fukushima sometimes because the government Dude, legalized yeah. the sale of that food. <laughs> Figure that Dude, out. Fresh tomatoes are, fresh tomatoes are the bomb. So I eat. Um, I do like I tomatoes, eat, I have to admit. I'm back. I'm actually back to eating, uh meat i was i was vegan and vegetarian for a while and then i'm what like with that well i'm what just happened? i real i realized that it's not the fact that you eat meat it's the fact it's it's um it's how you, you eat just it, have how to much eat. You eat yeah how you much you eat it and as far as the killing organic the, as far as far as the killing of the animals it's um yeah there's there seems to be this see this is the greatest thing about changing your mind it's, it's the greatest thing. There seems, there seems to be something weird about how we are so caring about these animals when there's like all these people starving in all these third world countries. <laughs> there's just something off about it. So then I'm like, nah, I think the animals are here to give their life to us, like the Hopi Indians have said. I just think the way we kill the animals is, is wrong. But I'm not going to get too caught up in that anymore. I mean, Do you think that they're here for us, really? Yeah. Specifically, not just that we're available to each other. Like yeah. If an orca I, sees me and he's yeah. hungry, or I remember, I remember reading or watching something about the Hopi Indian saying, you know, how they actually say that the animal really does know that they're giving their life to us. Yeah, 
I, I firm I believe that. I think the animals know a lot more than we think that they know. Yeah. And I think the animal knows that uh, they can someday be a human. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's that's something else. I didn't know that was in your repertoire of beliefs. Actually, maybe you did mention that last time. Yeah, yeah. So what's on the horizon? What are the plans? Are you going to stay in California? I know you're acting, right? You're taking acting lessons? Or no. You I was. No? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> no. What happened? What happened with that? You just decided it's not for you? Exactly. If I could wear, if, if I could wear, I, I saw myself on film and I just realized if I, if I could wear a mask everywhere, like then I'd probably yeah. do some acting, but I just, it was just, it was awkward and taking a class was awkward too. I, I did. You're I did, a very I did, interesting did, I, looking guy. What, I did pretty well. So, no, it's not about okay. looking. It's just about, it's just about uh, being somebody that is, uh, is I see. morphing, morphing into another person. It's just weird. Like I, it's the ego thing, man. I just don't like it. Um, we're coming up almost on an hour. So I guess you have things to do today. So we'll stop, uh, I guess, in nine, eight minutes and 30 seconds, basically. But <clears throat> before you go, I just wanted to ask you, um, would you do this again sometime? What? You know, do a podcast or have a conversation and maybe use it as a podcast. Yeah, don't we always do this? Oh, oh is this well, a podcast? I Oh, well, I'm think I'm planning on it being a podcast unless you have anything. Oh, I didn't even it. know this was a podcast. <laughs> oh, not now. It's not. But I'd like to. I thought you were public. just interviewing. I thought you were interviewing me because because you were trying to like be the next Johnny Carson or something. No, I want to. I want to perhaps. I'm thinking about getting a collection of these and asking people. You're the next Mark, you're the next Mark Marin, to be honest with you. Well, I guess I handled this a little too seriously for that, but maybe in the future. I just want to talk to good people and get their take on things. Um, I hope you find them. Do you, I found one here. Um, I want to ask you, uh, what can people do? And I'm not trying to guide you at this. No, that, it where you yeah. want. What can people do to make America or the world a better place, in your opinion? Should they vote a certain way? Should they be active politically? Should they... Study something, read something. What should no, they do? Just, just trying to improve and try, try to improve themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jimmy, Jimmy Carter even said that. I think he fell the other day, but he's okay. What do you think of Donald Trump? Or you don't I have to don't. comment if you don't want I to. I don't. I I honestly don't. I think about the people that think about him. I You're honestly interested. don't think. Yeah, I don't think about Donald Trump. Um, I really, I, I I think the situation is funny. The situation is uh, it's very funny how people are so inundated in what he's saying. Like really. Right. Right. He's Donald Trump, dude. Seriously. Yeah, right. Like, right, right. What do you expect him to say throughout the day? Exactly. Exactly. You know, I understand if people criticize his policies, but when they get all bent out of shape, apparently shocked at what he says and does, I want to say, get the bus driver off the flight deck. Like, you shouldn't expect him to be a statesman. And so this is why I think we have to change. Yeah, he's there. And even, the way even we do with politics. his policies, even with his policies, he has to be a certain way in order to get votes. If he, <laughs> right, they, it, the, the, it has to be separate. You can't, he can't be the way that the Democrats want. Other vote for him, <laughs> it doesn't work out that way. He, the people, the Republicans have to be a certain way to get their votes. Otherwise, right. they don't. Otherwise, they don't stay in power. Behind a closed right. door, he he could be like, you know, this pollution thing, this climate change. We're all fucked, man. But you know what? I gotta stay in power while I'm here. Right. Like, let, right. Let's all be honest with each other. There's no legislation that's gonna change all this stuff. 
Like that's what Jimmy Carter said in 1979. He said that in 1979. He said there's no legislations that he's like there's no legislation in the world that's going to change the environmental crisis and all the all the stuff that's going on in the world. None of this. Like I'll send you the article. Like he made a speech saying all this, and he talked about personal responsibility. He's the only president that ever talked about personal responsibility. I was like, oh my god! Like, could you imagine if a president came out and talked about that every day, and a teacher right. did that too? And said, right. oh, we got to change the way we eat. We got to change the way we live. We got to change the way we treat each other. Do you know who said yes. that? Who? Who? Tupac, before he was shot and killed. Really? He actually said that, yeah. He changed all his rap music from like fucking bitches and smoking weed to we got to change the way we eat. We got to change the way we live. And we got to change the way we treat each other. And then a couple days later, he was shot and killed. Wow. Think about that. Isn't yeah. it interesting? No, I don't know about a couple of days later, but it was definitely later. When some people get power, they they grow, and when other people get power, they implode. Look at Donald Trump, you know. But the poor guy started out compromised. Uh, who was it? I think it was Howard Stern. Somebody asked, "What do you think of him?" And he said, "I think he's just a man who's never had real love." You know. Somebody else said that too. <clears throat> Paul, where can people get in touch with you if you wanted to be available to help people with questions and things, or are you not into that kind of thing? Are you on the web? Do you have like a site, um, a Twitter, or <laughs> I know you don't have that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm talking to you. Like... By the way, everyone, Paul's book is coming out soon. It's called You're an Asshole. It's going to be published by Simon & Schuster. <laughs> no, that's just a joke. Paul, this has really been fun. I really, I really... Uh... I really appreciate it. This is the first time uh, you allowed me to talk so much. Yeah, well, I'm getting weird. paid. Oh. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not getting paid. Yeah, I, I do talk too much, don't I? Did I let you talk? No, I you actually, you, you've actually been listening to me more and more. It's kind of freaking me out. You never used to listen to me. <laughs> and to be honest with you, you never really should have listened to me. So I guess it's all working the right way. Oh my maybe god. You, maybe it like, wasn't the spiritual path. Maybe you just calmed down because I stopped interrupting you all these years. <laughs> no, you were right. You were correct to interrupt me. If I can go back in time and think about all of the not only you but the other friends that I've had that I was just just like throwing just mounds and mounds of diarrhea out of my mouth at them on a daily basis. Uh, if any if any of them ever watch this, I do apologize. I was wrong like ninety nine percent of the time. Um, but I know, learned I learned a lot from you though. Carl I mean, Young had... once said, "In order to go through, in order to get to heaven, you got to go through, you know, deep the depths of hell." You know, right? Oh, was I wrong about a lot of stuff? Are you reading anybody these days? What are you reading? Are you reading something I interesting? Read it. Yeah, I read a lot of Buddhist and Gnostic stuff. I'm uh, always we'll reading. have to talk about that next time. I want to hear about your ideas on Gnosticism and so on. It's very interesting because on and what, one moment you sound like an atheist, then you sound like a Christian, then you sound like a Buddhist. It's really, really true that you seem to be taking from a smorgasbord of great ideas. Oh, that's very, what. Yeah, that's that's important to do. You, what impressive. is that? You you create your own tapestry. Huh. Yeah. yeah uh, you, we're all creating our own tapestry. Crimes and misdemeanors. Crimes and misdemeanors, the Woody Allen movie. One of the characters says, an artist has to create his own moral universe. I think it's true. Oh, really? So, um, Interesting that Woody Allen would say that. Yeah, no, I think he's a very bright man. He's a very... He's a very introspective, interesting person. Studied philosophy. Yeah, my, yeah, my thing, I, the other thing that really woke me up is uh, my own hypocrisy. Mm. And, now, and now I love to point out the hypocrisy, especially with the Democrats. I love it. I call them the hypocrites because there's so much. <laughs> like the, like the, Republic, the Republicans are pretty cool because we know where they stand. Like I used to right. I stand the Republicans when I was a, a Democrat. 
But now I'm like, all right, I, I, I get it. All right. I know where they stand, but all oh, the hypocrisy of the Democrats. I love pointing out the hypocrisy of them. And guess what? They have no, they are just the worst debaters on the history of this planet because they just, everything is through emotion and nothing is through the intellect. Where, where in actuality, the Republicans are way, way too intellectual. The Democrats is everything's based on emotion. Uh, that's why that's why Trump is they can't stand Trump is because the way Trump makes them feel. Like I don't feel right with Trump. Obama made me feel so much better. It's just so crazy. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, you never want to be tied to your intellect, emotion, and especially your sexual energy too much. Did you know that our sexual energy is like? I think I believe I have to look it up from from the occult science that I get is like like the the emotional energy is like 30 percent more powerful than the intellect. And I believe like the sexual energy because we have three types of energy. You have the the scarecrow, which is the brain, the intellect, and then you have the emotional energy, which is a tin man. And then you have your sexual energy, which is the lion and I believe the sexual energy is like almost twice as powerful and three times as powerful as the intellect and the emotional energy. Which energy will that's why be Dorothy? We, exactly. Well, Toto, Toto, was the, Toto was the intuition. That is our intuition. Dorothy is obviously us. And we need to overcome our three energies we need to be in co we need to be in we need to Balance. unify them you the yeah the universe will give that they give back to that which is unified so we need to be in cohesion with all three balance with where all three. can i where can i find this breakdown of our energies through the story of the wizard of oz is this somewhere online uh i'd have to uh, I believe, it, it was a lecture. It was a Gnostic lecture. Ah, uh, okay. That, yeah. So the guy who wrote, uh, his name is, what, what's his name again? He was a Gnostic, by the way. But Manly. He was an esoteric. Is it, it wasn't, Manly? No, it wasn't Manly P. Hall. No, no, no. It was the guy who, I'm, I'm so, I'm so bad with this. Like, there's certain things that I just can't remember. The guy who wrote The Wizard of Oz was a Gnostic. Beethoven oh, was he? was a Gnostic. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people were. Wow. So was Shakespeare. A lot of Shakespeare. Was he really? Wow. Yeah, Shakespeare's That's, stories. I did not know that. So was Beethoven. So You're a was man full of knowledge, Paul. Carl Tom, so. Young, Plato. Oh, Plato. Was a, Carl, uh, Carl Young and I have the same name. Yeah. A lot. Did you yeah, know that Albert Young. Einstein and my grandfather, they went to different high schools together? <laughs> <laughs> Next time right, we'll talk that, comedy. Hey, hey, Carl, if I don't see you, yeah. say hello to yourself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Paul, man. thank you very much, man. I'll let you All go. Right, take care. Take care. Be well. Bye-bye.